Uh, but I, I, he did the creator of The Sandman and The Endless. And, and the, the creator of, as my daughter calls it, Boo Girl. Blueberry Girl, her favorite book. Boo Girl? Boo Girl, read? Yes. So, uh, and, and, and everyone, let's all take five seconds, assign a credit to him in your mind. I'm not going to read them all. Boom. You got it? Okay, let's take a look at it. Ladies and gentlemen, Neil Gaiman. Everybody waiting. Uh, good, everyone's okay. In, 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 in Seattle and in San Francisco, I got smart because in each case you had things that were fundamentally bookstores trying to seat 1,500 people. Um, and it always went slower than people thought. So that I got in, in Seattle, I got a ukulele player out to sing a ukulele, and, and in San Francisco, Last night in a church in Berkeley, we had a, a singer guitaring and stuff. But here, you just had to sit and entertain yourself. <laughs> Probably meet the person next to you in your seat, perhaps. And make friends. And... and by the way, the Seattle audience said that you guys didn't know how to party. I'm just saying. I don't know. That, that, I know. It was weird. It's so weird that they actually specifically said that to you. But, <laughs> so. I'm literally treating this like a Def Leppard show in 1983. I'm just saying, Seattle said you guys didn't know how to do it. Uh, so. so, Neil. Yes, sir. Ten years ago, you wrote American Gods. I was reading the intro uh, uh, at, a, at a Thai restaurant earlier today, so I'm nice and bloated. <laughs> this is a slim and dark and uh, short and bloated show, by the way, so enjoy. Um, but you talked about how you had moved to America in 1992, and suddenly, you know, growing up in England, now you have this gigantic canvas in front of you. And not just even, not even like a homogenous canvas, you have 50 completely distinct little, you know, states that suddenly you get to wander through. And that was the summer that I moved from Virginia where I lived in the suburbs, the blandest suburbs where, it, like, hey, we're going to go to the pizza tonight, it's pretty crazy, <laughs> to, um, to San Francisco, which was just this modern Baghdad, suddenly, that I was in, so, which was amazing. And then I remember I, I got my copy of Season of Mists signed at Comics Experience on Divisadero by you, and you were so nice. Well, I was trying to babble to you about the, the, the two the demons, Bubble Crunch, and, the, the, this, and you were like, okay, and you drew the Sandman for me, and just were uh, no pepper spray, like you know, not like not like Super Afton did to me. So um, you were really cool. So like, how that that it's the what was the first thing that you remember about when you came to America and said, oh my God, I'm going to be living here? What was that moment um, like? And, and do, is, do you try to recreate that moment in this book? I, I definitely don't try and recreate the moment because it was this slow realization that I was completely out of my depth. I thought I understood America. I'd come to America several times. I, I'm working for DC, I'd come to New York. Um, I, I had been grown up watching American television watching American movies, uh, reading American books, I figured I, I knew what America was like. When people would say to me, when I was writing Sandman, um, they'd say, well, how can you, an English person, write these stories set in America? And I'd go, well, you know, I may not be writing uh, a New York that's the New York that a New Yorker would write, I'm probably writing a New York that's about as good as somebody who's lived in Seattle all his life and has never been to New York <laughs> would write. Um, and that was, that was how I felt. And then I moved here. And then there was this very, very slow process of me just going, 
don't you think that's a bit weird to people? <laughs> and people going, no. And, um, okay, four days ago, oh God. I was, <laughs> no, I take, example, I mean, it still goes on. Four days ago, I'm in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to do something very much like this. Um, and the limo driver, from the airport to the hotel, where I'm dropping off my bags, and then to this, the music hall in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, is a little old lady. And I want you to know, I am not little old ladyist. A lot of my best friends are little old ladies. I, I like little old ladies, they are wonderful people. Um, and, and I see no reason at all why little old ladies shouldn't be limo drivers. <laughs> or astronauts, or, or, or but, and this one was a limo driver, and I'm going, this is really cool, with Lord Lady Limo Driver, I, I like this. And, um, she got us from the airport to the hotel, really, really well. Later that evening, I discovered, walking back, that the music hall where I was appearing was uh, three blocks from the hotel, and it took, in the rain, about, four and a half minutes to walk. Now, this was not the kind of little old lady who used things like GPS. <laughs> so she didn't actually print out addresses. She had a, a much more interesting method of getting from point A to point B, um, which was ask somebody at random for directions. <laughs> and then, because you can't remember whether they said turn left or turn right, <laughs> Pick one and try and stick with it. <laughs> Which meant that the journey from the hotel to the musical took 45 minutes. <laughs> the last 15 minutes of which we were being guided in by cell phone from the poor publicist who was sitting next to me and was freaking out. I wasn't freaking out. I was, I was actually sort of exulting and plotting and thinking this is so wonderful because it turns out, if you are driven through most of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, at one point or another, you are going to look out of the window of the car at the incredibly dull, rather small park by the river on your right. And you're going to glance over, and you're going to look back, and then you're going to look again, and you're going to see a full-size nuclear submarine half submerged in concrete in the middle of a park. And you are then going to spend the rest of the, the entire rest of the evening saying to people, you have a nuclear submarine. <laughs> that little part, there's a patch of green by the side of the road and you have a half submerged nuclear submarine. And they go, yep, that's the albacore. <laughs> And you go, don't you think that's a bit odd? <laughs> and they go, oh, it's always been there, it's the other one. <laughs> and, and it just looks as if it's about to submerge under the rest of the park and take off under the ground. That was my experience for the entire first sort of couple of years of living in America. I, I, I'd be going, this is weird. <laughs> Did you people, so you people park a car on the ice of the lake <laughs> every winter and you take bets on when it's going, the ice is going to melt. <laughs>